You're watching France 24 and we've been looking through the international papers for you today as usual. Angela Yeo joins me in the studio now to discuss them. Angela, let's start with Zimbabwe and the question of the day, of course, was Morgan Changarai right to abandon the ballot box to stop the beatings? Well, uh, we've got, we start with an article from The Guardian, which is an editorial piece called A Triumph for Terror. And it looks a bit at why Morgan Changarai stepped down. And of course, it was a very tough decision for him. Um, taking part would mean recognising an unfair, essentially unfair vote. Um, while pulling out means that Mugabe wins. Now, just a bit of the context, uh, there's been a lot of voter intimidation in Zimbabwe and there aren't as many election monitors planned for this time around. And uh, the article asks, well, where to now? Um, basically, the regime, the Zimbabwean regime may not need its people's support, but it says that it does need electricity from places like uh, South Africa and supplies from other countries. So it's up to them to step up and, and push for um, Zimbabwe to, to, to go in the direction it should be going. Now, oil and, of course, the black gold and the Saudi solution to its shortage. What are the regional papers making of the summit over the weekend on oil security? Well, we've got an article from Al Watan, which is a Saudi Arabian independent paper commentary from an economist, um, economist who says that... Um, uh, basically, the Americans are, are being a little bit hypocritical. It, we look at how uh, OPEC, um, the Organisation for Petrol Exporting Countries, says that it's not a problem of supply or demand. Um, it's speculators who are pushing oil prices up. Um, but Americans, the Americans don't buy that, insisting it's a problem of supply. So this writer says, well, why don't the Americans go and drill for oil in Alaska then? Um, they've said that drilling costs have gone down. And as for environmental concerns, uh, a lot of Gulf oil is produced in inhabited areas. So the Americans perhaps shouldn't be so concerned about that. And basically, the America's arguments don't hold up and other countries aren't going to put up with their superior attitude. But we then we have an article from the Sydney Morning Herald, uh, which looks at what the American policy is at the moment in the lead up to the American elections in November. Now, this writer says that when it comes to coherent energy policy, neither candidate has really levelled with the US public and what they're spouting off is a, is a lot of hot air for the moment. Like John McCain for the moment plans to lift that ban for drilling oil off America's coastline which would allow drilling in Alaska, um, which would give cheaper oil but it would take some years for that to happen. Um, John, uh, Barack Obama on the other hand says that we should rely on solar and wind technology. Again, that is going to take time to kick in. Um, both say they're ready for new nuclear reactors but not saying where but what this correspondent points out, neither of them are really talking about conservation and making, um, making lifestyle changes and that Americans are basically going to be in for a rude shock for all the little changes they need to make, maybe giving up their bigger cars to meet uh, uh, targets for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Well, Angela, picking up on the idea of lifestyle change and indeed change of life altogether, getting up at 3 a.m. as we do isn't really much of an existence, but we could buy a totally different one on eBay. That's right. It's uh, the life of a British man, Ian Usher, and you see him in that photo there, who is living in Western Australia. His wife left him last year and he decided to sell his life to start afresh. So basically what you get if you are the top bidder is his three-bedroom house, his car, his motorbike, his adventure sports gear, um, his CDs, his clothes, plus he'll introduce you to his friends and he get his job in a rug shop. Um, the top bidder, like he's hoping for about 200, 240 euros, but he's gotten a bid more than four times that amount. So he's going to be able to start off his new life with that money quite nicely. Goodness me. Well, and finally, uh, Angela, let's just squeeze in a word on football. Uh, Italy, obviously, in deep gloom this morning. That's right. Disappointment for Italy after being knocked out of the Euro 2008 by Spain on penalties 4-2. The body language says it all day in that photo of Daniele De Rossi after missing one of those key penalty kicks. So it's all finished for for Italy there. Thank you very much indeed, Angela Yeo. It's all finished from you today uh, for now, but thanks very much to tuning in to France Fancat. Stay tuned now. News is coming up soon. Thanks.